Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video, doing the end sale update for June for today's second video. So I'm going to bring you an update on everything that's going on in the equatorial Pacific Ocean in terms of La Nina, El Nino, all of that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll have a look at uh, what's happening, you know, currently, and then we'll have a look at some model data, see what's forecast happen with the uh, ANSO region for the rest of the year. So this is June 2021's ANSO update. I shall get on with that for you in a moment. Just to say that the first video, video release today was our 7 a.m. forecast. I've got a 10 to 14 there coming up for you later on that will include all of the regular features. Please like, share, subscribe on all the videos. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. Uh, this ENSO update is going to be placed within the uh, ENSO updates for 2021 playlist uh, on uh, YouTube. So uh, you'll be able to find this. You can just go to the uh, playlist tab on the uh, YouTube homepage and then you'll be able to uh, see the list of all of our playlists and uh, ENSO uh, for 2021. Those videos are going to be, uh, this is as part of the uh, playlist uh, for the uh, channel. I've got two more of these to do. Uh, can you believe it? Once uh, this one is done, we've just got a one to do in July and a final one to do in August. And then the ENSO updates get merged with the winter updates from September. So we're getting closer. We're getting closer to it now. Uh, but still some ENSO updates to go before we get to that. Right, so let's start off the webcam and we'll bring you update what's going on. I'm going to start off cold and warm episodes by season chart from CPC, NCP and NOAA. This is showing all end events back to 1950 uh, through tri-monthly periods. So uh, where we've got these blue colours just here, that's where, uh, or blue numbers, that's where uh, we've got La Nina events going. I have a La Nina in 1950, for example, first half of it anyway. And then you see how it uh, goes uh, uh, goes to black just here. And uh, that's back to Enso Neutral uh, then later on in 1950. Conversely, the positive red numbers are El Nino events. For example, there is a weak El Nino event going on in 1953. Uh, and through to the start of 1954, then that reverses, and um, we see blue colours uh, arrive in blue numbers, and so we go back to, uh, we'll go to La Nina, as we get into second half of 1954, and that carries on right way through to the uh, end, virtually, of 1956, very long La Nina, that one. So red is El Nino, blue is La Nina, let's come down to the uh, current uh, year, then 2021, and here it is, we see that we begin 2021 with a weak La Nina, going on so uh this actually starts in the summer or late summer of 2020 when these blue numbers start to appear here I mean, it peaks quite early actually in a try mode period for X october november december normally the peak for so is a little bit later than that other uh, the try month please anyway um so so uh we have this week to borderline moderate uh la nina going on through the end of 2020 and into the start of 2021 and gradually weakening with this uh la nina as we go through into the spring the latest number that we have for march april may tri monthly period is minus 0 0.7 so that is still within la nina fresh on i've been expecting that that would go back to into neutral actually to the tri monthly period of march april may but actually still um just about into landing your threshold there uh, for that tri-monthly period. I think the next number will go back to Enso Neutral, this one uh, that will be placed here for April, May, June. I think that will go back to uh, Enso Neutral. Remember, it's half a degree above average for El Nino, half a degree below average for La Nina. So 0 0.5 degrees is like the, the minimum temperature requirement uh, to get a La Nina designated and against 0 0.5 degrees above average to get an El Nino designated and over five trimonthly periods as well so there is quite you know quite strict criteria to be able to get an ENSO uh, event uh, designated. 2013 is an interesting one at PC throughout the year of 2013 generally uh, we're, we're um, uh, cool of an average would be temperature anomalies but but never quite making it to uh, to um, to that uh, 0 0.5 degrees below average threshold. So there with 0 0.4 degrees 
below average. And again, there, 0 0.4 degrees below average. And then there, 0 0.3 degrees below average example there. 0 0.3 degrees below average, 0, 0 0.4 degrees below average. So just on the cusp, but not quite making it from ENSO neutral, which, but on the cool side of ENSO neutral, of course, but just not quite making it from ENSO neutral to landing. That does happen quite a lot, actually, uh, more often than, than you would uh, think. Anyway, so I think when this updates next month, when we do next month's ENSO update for July, we will be able to confirm then that we've gone back to uh, ENSO neutral, as uh, I think the next number that comes in will be uh, uh, under uh, about half a week below average threshold. So I think it'll be something like 0 point, minus 0 0.3 or minus 0 0.4. Uh, right, this is how the temperature anomalies are looking, or were looking, indeed, last month's end so update. This is from the 23rd of May. Of course, this is the area we're looking at just here, the Equatorial Pacific Ocean, from Peru all the way over to Indonesia. So last month, uh, we did still have, like, a leftover signal for uh, landing. If there was still a little bit of uh, those cold and average sea surface temperature anomalies there, in the Ensign region, particularly towards the eastern side of the uh, Ensign region. It had gone back to Ensign neutral, but still on the cold side of Ensign neutral. If you look at the very latest, this is from the 26th of June, you see we have, we have warmed up the sea surface temperature anomalies more through the Ensign region. So now we're clearly, obviously, back to Ensign neutral. Um, and we're actually a little bit on the warm side of Ensign neutral, maybe, um, but not, not by much, uh, except perhaps in this eastern portion of the actual Pacific Ocean. But, uh, yeah, we, we, I mean, we're definitely back to ENSO neutral now with those sea surface temperature anomalies, and we wait to see uh, what's going to happen next. Subsurface temperature anomaly-wise, uh, this is how things are looking. This is from the CPC, NCEP, and uh, NOAA PDF. So with this, you have to think that we've got Peru over here on the eastern side of the actual Pacific Ocean, not Indonesia, over here on the western side of the extra Pacific Ocean. And these are the depths of the oceans, uh, of the ocean just here going right all the way down to 300 metres. So just under the surface, it's a little bit warmer than average through there, uh, but not supported, you know, at depth. We have got a larger area of above average subsurface temperature anomalies there from around uh, 100 to 200 metres. Uh, uh, the core of that gets down to around, it goes around two degrees above average, um, which is probably not enough, you know, to suggest that El Nino is on the way either. There's not much way of cold and average subsurface temperature anomalies, except here, right in the depths of the uh, extra Pacific Ocean, between 200 and 300 metres, a long way down, uh, there is some cold and average subsurface temperature anomalies there. But overall, that looks like, you know, subsurface wise, it's also so neutral as well. So, so on the surface, with the sea surface temperature anomalies, we're, we're at ENSO neutral. And subsurface uh, temperature anomalies look like they are very much uh, around ENSO neutral as well. So at the moment, there's not much sign of either an El Nino or, or a La Nina. Looks like at the moment, we're going to continue uh, ENSO neutral. Southern Oscillation Index uh, looks like this. It's just, it's just an index that's reflecting the atmospheric state. It does not drive anything in its own terms. It just tells what the atmosphere is doing, measuring air pressures between Darwin and Tahiti. So when the SY is negative, we're going to have, uh, we're going to be in like an, an El Nino type state uh, for in the Southern Ocean. When the uh, SY is positive, we'll be in a La Nina type state in the Southern Ocean. Uh, and again, very much indicative of ENSO neutral at the moment. So uh, these uh, two columns just here are uh, showing the air pressures for Tahiti and also for Darwin. And then this column just here is uh, is uh, showing the overall SOI number based on those barometric pressure readings. So uh, you can see that, uh, for example, on the 20th of June, we're negative at minus 16. Uh, 21st of June, we're negative again at minus 13. That's indicative of an atmospheric state that would reflect uh, El Nino. Conversely, though, by the 24th of June, we've gone very positive, plus 14. Uh, that's La Nina type atmospheric state. 25th of June, uh, plus 10. That again, La Nina type uh, state. Uh, and latest days, we have 26th of June, again positive, plus 5. 27th of June, negative at plus, uh, minus 5. And 28th of June, negative at minus 6. So day by day, we're trading negative 
and positive numbers, which tells us that the atmosphere is neither in an El Nino state particularly or in a La Nina state particularly. It's sort of swinging between uh, the, the two sort of states, and that is very much what you expect to happen when you are at Enso neutral. Neither state uh, can can get an ascendancy. So, so we've got the uh, ocean. There it is at Enso neutral. We've got the uh, the surface of the ocean, I suppose, uh, sea surface temperature anomalies at uh, Enso neutral. We've got subsurface temperature anomalies at Enso neutral. And we've got the atmospheric state via the SY at ENSO neutral. So everything tells us that at the moment we are very much in ENSO neutral conditions as we move uh, through into the middle part of this summer. Right, let's have a look at some forecasts then, see what uh, models are predicting. So this is how CFSV2 is uh, looking at the moment. So we've got our temperature anomalies on the side, dates in monthly periods on the bottom of the chart. Again, this shows where we are right now, which is bang on. And so neutral on this zero uh, line just here. The CFSV2 is increasingly moving towards a weak La Nina developing mode through the rest of this summer and into the autumn. See how this black dashed line, which is the ensemble mean, is uh, gradually dropping away. It takes a while, not really until we get right to the end of the summer that we go back into uh, into weak planning. You remember again, the important number is uh, 0 0.5 degrees below average, that, that minus 0 0.5, very important number to get to half a degree below average. And the 7 b 2 on Sommer Plume uh, does actually, actually get to that, drops under half a degree below average, so we go back into uh, weak landing by the autumn, and that carries on into uh, the winter uh, as well. A few of the, so with these, the, the red lines are like the oldest uh, ensemble plume uh, members, and the blue lines are the most recent, the latest ensemble plume members. You see a few of those are actually, uh, at the moment, the, the latest ones are actually sort of going down to moderate La Nina uh, temperature thresholds. Um, I'm not sure how seriously we take that, but definitely the CFS is beginning uh, is beginning to shift towards a weak La Nina, I think, re-emerging uh, through the end of the summer and into the autumn. It will be very late. Normally, these events begin early summer, but uh, so that will be quite late. But that's definitely what the CFS is indicating there, I think, uh, wants to take us back into weak La Nina. Let's have a look at CANSIPS. So, uh, again, this is where we're looking. This is for July, CANSIPS forecast. See, so temperature no, so cooler than average here in the far western part of the equatorial Pacific Ocean, a little bit warmer than average in the eastern portion of the equatorial Pacific Ocean. As we go through month by month, you see that CANSIPS is also developing a uh, weak La Nina signature into the autumn. It takes a long while. This is how August uh, looks. Not particularly, you know, that's in so neutral, perhaps on the cool side of it, so neutral. But it's really September that CANSIPS begins to uh, reform this uh, La Nina, particularly central and western based uh, weak La Nina, again going in September. And then let's go through to the end of the year. Actually, you know, the proper La Nina signature is in place. This is December when we see all parts of the Ensa region, right away from the eastern uh, side of the Equatorial Pacific Ocean, all the way over to Indonesia, being forecast to be colder than average. So that is, you know, that's genuine um, uh, La Nina signature. We've got CFS, therefore, and CANSIPS going for a re emergence of La Nina as we go through into the uh, autumn, albeit it's quite a weak landing, it's not particularly strong landing, but they are but definitely both going for uh, landing to return later on in the year. This is uh, ECMWF, the, uh, the uh, ENSO forecast from ECM. So uh, again, we've got our temperature anomalies on the side, the dates are along the bottom. So uh, once more, we start off around here at Enso Neutral on this zero, all important uh, zero line uh, just here. The ECM has also shifted a little bit towards uh, La Nina, I think, re-emerging as we go uh, through the end of summer and into the autumn. So by October, which is just there, most of the ensemble plume members, I mean, these are still on the warm side of Enso Neutral, of course, or borderline only, but they're outliers. These are going for very strong La Nina's down here, but again, they're outliers. But the, the broad sort of thrust of the ensemble plume is anything from there to there, really, which is Enso Neutral on the cool side towards La Nina. Uh, and then that carries on into the end of the year. So as we get to December 
and again you see uh, with a little bit more of a, a wider range but still on the cold side of Enzo Neutral to La Nina. So uh, last month the ECM was uh, predicting, you know, it would just stay around Enzo Neutral but this month I think it has definitely inched a little bit. Uh, not as much as the CFS and Kansas, but it has definitely inched a little bit towards uh, a re-emergence of uh, weak La Nina, the end of the summer and into the autumn. The Beijing Climate Centre uh, model looks like that. So for July, around Enso Neutral, probably a little bit on the cool side, actually, uh, especially in the eastern side of the Equatorial Pacific Ocean, just here. But again, also just there, kind of uh, with a La Nina type uh, signal in july uh that's how it looks by september so again uh, uh sort of end so neutral through the central western part of the equatorial pacific ocean probably a little bit more towards landing in the eastern part and then by december quite interesting because then it has us going into like a week uh it's so neutral but going towards the warm side of so neutral maybe borderline El Nino, but probably not quite getting to El Nino threshold, but definitely like on the warm side of Enso Neutral by December, which is rather strange, rather bizarre. You wouldn't expect to go from that in September to that in uh, December, particularly. Um, but uh, that's what Beijing Climate Center was. Last month, Beijing Climate Center was going for a proper El Nino, though, so it's backed off that, actually. It has moved, you know, cooler um, compared to last month when it was going for like El Nino to get going. Um, in the second half of this year. And then finally we've got the UK Met uh, model, Glow C5. Let's have a quick look at that one, see what it's forecasting. So uh, this is the uh, for the tri-monthly period of July, August, September. A little bit of a signal of, uh, of a landing year there, perhaps. Cold and average in the central part of the actual Pacific Ocean. Warmer, though, towards the Peruvian coast. Generally, that is ain't so neutral, though. Um, so you want to go to months three to... So that's months two to four. Months three to five look like that. Strengthening signature for uh, a La Nina there, becoming cooler than average again through uh, many parts of the Equatorial Pacific Ocean for August, September, October. Then the final trimonthly period gets us to September, October, November. And by then, it does look as though we're back into La Nina again, doesn't it? It looks like we're back into... So like a central western base La Nina, but it looks like we're back into La Nina again by then. Albeit on the weak side, uh, although that blue area is going down to around uh, one and a half to two degrees below average. So, so you know, quite a substantial anomaly just there. But I think overall that is a relatively weak La Nina that's been signature, but a signature, but a definitely like a signature for La Nina to uh, re-emerge. So I reckon, put it all together, I reckon what we can say is that at, at the moment we're at Enso Neutral, definitely we, we have come out of the La Nina that we had 2020, 2021, we've gone back to Enso Neutral. But I think putting all of this data together, there are increasing signs here, or there's no sign of it in terms of the sea or subsurface temperature, but in terms of what the models are picking up on, there are increasing signs here that we could start to move back towards uh, La Nina towards the end of the summer, probably around August, and then developing through the autumn. Very late to do that. I say normally these events will get going to the end of spring, early summer, around now, uh, really. So it's very late for this to happen. But we have seen this quite a bit over the last few years that we are that we're getting ENSO updates developing you know, later than would be expected. I think last year's was quite a late starter. This will be an even later starter, though, if it happens. And uh, and so, so yeah, it looks... I think we can take an El Nino off the table for this year. I don't think we're going to have an El Nino uh, this year. I think the, the coming winter... Uh, of course, this is particularly important for winter, which is why we will eventually merge these ENSO updates with the winter updates from September. I think I think this coming winter is either going to be ENSO neutral on the cold side of ENSO neutral, or it may even go into a weak landing year. And there are, there are increasing signs uh, of, uh, of that we could see a weak landing year beginning to get going again uh, towards uh, the autumn. Right, so uh, that's it for this month's end. So update, if you enjoyed the video, please can you like, share, subscribe, subscribe, uh, you know, to the channel. Thank you so much for doing that. 
and share the video wherever you can on your uh, Facebook and Twitter pages and whatnot. You know, share it far and wide. Spread the message about Gaz Worthies. And thank you so much uh, for doing this. We'll do it all over again uh, next month. And July's answer update will be the penultimate one uh, for the year. And then we'll have a final answer update in August. And as I say, we merge them with the winter updates, which will commence at the beginning of September. Now we're going to be back later on for 10 to 14 there, but we'll include all the regular features, so come back for that then. Uh, but for this month's Enso update for June uh, 2021, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.